At mile marker 47, you're about to cross seven miles of open water. You can tour the old bridge by leaving from the visitor center at Knight's Peak. While building his railroad, Henry Flagler could have filled most of the seven mile channel as the water is somewhat shallow. But the engineers changed their plans and instead decided to bridge the seven mile gap. Pigeon Key, about one third the way across the bridge, was a major staging area when the railroad was built. The last remaining buildings of the railroad camp stands to this day preserved as a historical site. All of the buildings are braced and on pilot. Their construction is a testament to the railroad men who learned their lessons from the four hurricanes that hit the rail line during its construction. Henry Flagler was John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil partner. As we ride the last train to paradise, here's the rest of the story. All aboard! Flagler was born in 1830 in New York State, the son of a minister. He left school in the eighth grade and moved to Ohio, where he worked in family-owned stores. He expanded those stores into the grain and distillery business. It was through shipping grain that he met a grain broker by the name of John D. Rockefeller. Flagler sold the grain shipping business, made a small fortune of producing and selling salt during the Civil War. But when the war ended, Flagler's salt business went broke. He moved to Cleveland, where he teamed up with Rockefeller and re-entered the grain business. Rockefeller was more interested in shipping oil than grain, so the Standard Oil Company was formed. Flagler ran the company. He set about buying out small refineries, and soon Standard Oil became a monopoly. When Flagler moved the company to New York, it became the largest and richest industrial company in the world. Later in life, Flagler found himself before a congressional committee discussing antitrust laws. His wife Mary was stricken with tuberculosis. Doctors recommended a warmer climate for Mary, so Flagler chose Jacksonville, Florida. At the time, he found Florida boring, with few attractions for vacationers, so they returned to New York. Mary passed away in 1881. In 83, Flagler married one of his wife's nurses. They spent the winter in Florida, this time in St. Augustine. He reduced his standard oil workload and proceeded to build and buy hotels. He also built several churches, a hospital, water, electric, and sewer infrastructures, and his own winter home. In 1885, he purchased a short-line railroad running from Jacksonville to St. Augustine. The line became the Florida East Coast Railway. He expanded the line down to Palm Beach. Flandler was a powerful man, not only financially, his money also made him powerful politically, to the point where he could change laws. His second wife, Ida Alice Shrouds, was committed to an insane son. At the time, insanity was not grounds for divorce. Flagler used his influence to change Florida law, and he was able to marry his third wife, Mary Lily Keenan. Later, Florida repealed Flagler's divorce law. Flagler was not the first to envision a railroad to Key West. As early as 1831, it had been suggested by Key West entrepreneurs. A survey route was produced in 1866, but Flagler was the only one who had the financial wherewithal to get the job done. In 1902, he hired surveyors to find out if it was physically feasible. Money was not the consideration. In 1904, at the age of 74, Flangler invested two-fifths of his wealth and said, build it. To build a railroad over the sea, 
Plankton needed heavy marine equipment, land, ships, and manpower. He acquired all of this with his own money. Ten dredges worked each side of the rail bed, piling rock and covering it with fill. The rail bed was laid as quickly as possible so the trains could haul in building supplies. 150 barges were employed to ferry material from deep water offshore ships. There was a job for everyone. The pay was $1.25 a day, food, lodging, and medical care included. At any one time, nearly 5,000 men worked the project. They used four and a half million gallons of fresh water every month. In the end, a total of 40,000 men were employed. Coffer dams, using Portland cement, were used to build most of the British ports. The hurricane of 1906 created havoc. 130 men perished. A houseboat holding 161 workers lost 83 men. After the 1906 hurricane, Flagler's men were more cautious. Two more hurricanes claimed only a few lives when the workforce was substantially cut back during the hurricane season. Not even considering hurricanes, it was dangerous work. During the seven years it took to build the Overseas Railroad, 250 men died in construction accidents. Some were buried while pouring cement into the bridge supports. There were other problems. In 1910, one of the locomotives set a fire along the tracks in Key Largo. It burned much of the island, prompting Flagler to switch his engines from coal to oil. The entire project was a race against time. The goal was to complete the line to Key West before Flagler's 82nd birthday. They almost made it. Flagler's birthday was on January 2nd. On January 22nd, Flagler rode his private rail car to Key West. There was a three-day celebration, a party like Key West had never seen. Flagler died a year later, his dream fulfilled. In today's dollars, it will cost $640 million to build the same railroad. The railroad never made the money Flagler had envisioned. It was expensive to run. Cuba and the Panama Canal connections were not as successful as he had hoped. In 1932, the railroad went bankrupt. 1935 hurricane hit, washing out over 40 miles of rail. Even the train itself was destroyed. As a testament to the extraordinary engineering skills of the Flagler teams, all of the I concrete and back. steel bridges That's were still awesome. destroyed. It's so beautiful and down here. We are still standing to this day. The state acquired much of the railroad right away and then built the overseas highway, which was completed in 1938. Henry Flagler was not only a superb businessman and a big... That's it from the Seven Mile Bridge in the Florida Keys. Thanks for watching everyone. This is Sandy from Canadian Bloghouse. Be sure to follow me later on Periscope throughout the day. I'll be coming to you live from Key West, Florida. Thanks guys. Bye.